Hello everyone, this is Smudge8, and I just wanted to show off this cool little game that I've been a little... Anyway, as I was saying, I've been a little obsessed with this game, and I thought I'd just show it off. Let's see here. So I'm just going to play a game, and this game is actually pretty simple. Uh, you just ha you basically just have a deck of cards, and you play them three at a time if you have enough energy uh, in order to win. So... As I start off, you see I've got these five cards. I've got Bulgogi, The Big Bang, Ancient Olympia, Caterpillar Tracks, and Titan the Moon of Saturn. Now, the objective of this game is to score as many points as you can. Uh, I'm not going to have a good turn this turn, that's okay. I'll just pass uh, to score as many points as you can. As you see, each card uh, has a point value, and so those point values make this little dude move back and forth uh, across the board, and after three turns, whoever uh, has the most... And after three turns, whoever has the most... Uh, points wins that round, and then you, you have to win three of the five rounds to win. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see uh, where it tracks the rounds. And as you can see, each round has a different symbol, and these cards also have different colors. Like this yellow one was a history card, the green is science, purple is planets, uh, look, a different shade of green is the... I guess this green, the science green, is more of a teal. Uh, but there's also life on land, life in uh, oceans and seas, um, arts and culture, and paleontology, and astronomy. I've actually got a lot of astronomy cards in my hand right now. Uh, so i got to play some of those. Get these guys out there. Oh, oh, he just forfeiting the game. Anyway, as I was trying to say, the reason I downloaded this game was because, ooh, Paleontology Arena. That'll be nifty. Sadly, I don't have any cards that help me out with that. But I saw an ad for this game talking about how it was like some kind of educational game. And I thought that was cool, because I, I want to be a teacher, and I want to be able to educate people about a little bit of everything, honestly. And so I thought this might be a cool teaching tool. So I downloaded it a couple days ago, and I started playing it, and... Ooh, like a perfect tie there. What are the odds? And I've been really enjoying it. Now uh, you'll notice all these cards are all real things. Uh, so for instance, we have Caterpillar Tracks, Titan is back here. I'm gonna play this card. I'll explain in what it is next time it pops up because that card is actually really cool. But um, yeah, that looks good. But when you're viewing these cards in your collection outside of the gameplay, you can flip them over and each one actually has some fun facts about whatever object it is in front of it there. And so it's I haven't been able to read all of the ones that I have yet, and I don't have very many out of the full collection, but I've been having a blast reading them. I've learned some things that I didn't know, even though I'm a super science nerd. So hopefully I can just barely... okay, I can pull out ahead here. So you see, when the card grows like that on its own, that's because it's activating its ability. We're going to the space arena. Now, 
you didn't get to really see this last time, but you'll notice that different arenas have, have different colors, different backgrounds to match the different categories the cards belong in. When you play a card in the same category as the forfeiter, Jeez. Hey, at least I'm winning a lot. Anyway, I may as well show you Godzilla. The Godzilla card is really, is quite hilarious, actually. Um, cards and decks. Search. Alright. Godzilla. As you can see, he costs 15 energy. I That's something else I haven't been able to mention. So as you can see, he costs 15 energy and has 200 power, so that's a lot. Uh, and its ability is when it's returned to your deck, so after you've played it, you give the card plus 20 power for the rest of the game. Now, I'm a huge Godzilla fan normally, but what I didn't know until I got this card was that there is actually a Godzilla constellation, which they've pictured here. And on the back, it explains it, saying, Behold, the Godzilla constellation, a new constellation informed from gamma ray emitting stars. And by new here, we of course mean several billion years old. Most new constellations observed by the Fermi telescope from, come from distant galaxies far beyond ours, with the gigantic black holes at their centers. And so, this constellation is actually made using a spec. was actually named uh, based off of a bunch of stuff they found using a high power radio, uh, not radio, gamma ray telescope. Uh, so this is a constellation you would never be able to see with your human eyes, which is why it's a new constellation because we just because we found it not too long ago using a new using advanced telescopes. Anyway, I may as well show you the deck I was using. This is my Solar System Eats deck. Something cool they do with the competitive side is like different weeks, different types of. Uh, different types of uh, cards will be stronger. Uh, like I talked about with the arena bonus, they can also give to like subcategories. So for instance, you'll see a lot of pl of my, I, uh, a lot of my s astronomy cards have this uh, little Saturn icon in their right above below their image. So that represents objects from inside the solar system. And what's going on is the solar system is and so this week, the solar system and uh, these fork knife spoon dudes, uh, the e food category, both get extra bonuses. So I built this deck specifically for this week uh, to take advantage of those, which honestly, I find that really cool that you're able to just, that they change things up so frequently. Anyway, let's try for one more battle and see if... The, see if we can actually get through more than one round. More than two rounds, I guess. Alright, here we go. Here goes nothing. Ooh, we're starting out in the ocean. Neat. I do like all the little animations and stuff that they've got on here. Let's see. We do not have any ocean cards yet. We we'll want to save... Uh, so we don't want to play this card because, as you can see, the food arena is up next, so... We'll want to save. I, we're, I'm gonna want to save that. We can play our two planets out here for a decent 100 power start out. Uh, I'll have to leave this third space empty because I don't have enough power to play a third card yet. Nice sloth. That's a card I haven't seen before. Let's see. Nice thing. So Earth is always a fun card because it gives you extra energy when you draw it. Uh, so you can see right now I have 18 energy. And I'm going to play... Well, let's play Earth. Earth had cost 3 energy, so now I'm down to 15. I play Hornusen. I, haven't, I don't know what this is, actually. I need to read this card. Uh, but that's 4 energy, and it doesn't give us any power right now, but it will later. 
in the game, which will be super useful. We'll play Ancient Olympia as well. Unfortunately, uh, Ancient Olympia's power only activates if we won that turn, and as you can see, we didn't because we regressed. Thankfully, though, we have just barely regressed. And so now, now I can play those two. And that's not a lot of power, so normally I would save Nicholas Copernicus, because as you can see, when he's played, all your solar system cards get plus 15 power. But I'm kind of desperate to win this round, so we'll just give this a shot. Mosasaurus and Amazon River Dolphin is a nice combo. Uh, Mosasaurus just boosts all of your light uh, ocean mammals, which is kind of weird because Mosasaurus isn't actually an ocean mammal, it's a reptile, but whatever. You know, so I guess sometimes they have to bend a few rules to get the cards to properly synergize. So we're playing both of our food cards, and this is another card I really enjoy, the Big Bang, because it permanently, because as you can see here, we have our little ring, next to the energy bar, we have a little ring with a f number 14 in it, that used to be a 13 if you go back a few seconds, um, and the reason it's increased to 14 is because we played Big Bang, and what it what that's going to do for us is it's going to give us one extra new energy at the end of each turn. So we made a nice jump. We'll say, I don't know too much about the strategy of this game, just because I'm fairly new. Alright, let's see. Let's play Mary Cassett and Godzilla. Like I said, there's information on the back of every single one of these cards, but I haven't read most of them yet because I've been too busy playing the playing the actual game. Nice, and Godzilla gets his power up. And we get our third food card, our last food card, Aki and Saltfish. I like this one. It does a similar thing to Godzilla, where it gets stronger the more times it's played in a game. I kind of just gravitate to cards like that in general. So let's play that combo for now, just to lock in our win. Maybe I should have... Oh no, he played all three. Ooh, yeah. No, I'm glad I... I'm glad I played some cards. Yeah, see how that almost took me back to the beginning. That would not have been good. And it gets the power up. So I won this round. So now we're going into the paleontology arena. And the di one of the disadvantages of my deck is I don't actually have anything that can be played here. But I've got a lot of strong cards, so. Usually I can, about, I'd say 50-50 with this deck. Depends on what my opponent's running. Ooh. Oh no, we've both played Mars on each other, which actually reduces the other person's energy per turn for the rest of the round. Which is not good, because you need big energy to play, all, to be able to always fill up all three spots. As you saw, I once again had to leave a spot open, because I didn't have enough energy. So, we'll play our Hornowson, and then let's see, we'll play Neptune, and we'll play, that's not a lot of power, so we'll play Pluto, the dwarf planet, as well. Barely won that one. Glad I went, gl I'm glad I went all in instead of trying to play an, an extra effect or something. Oh, Wind Power is another one that gives you energy when it's drawn. It's not as good as Earth, uh, because Earth actually gives you more energy than it costs. But still, this is basically a free card. So, I think it's worth playing. So, let's get 
some use out of Nicholas Copernicus here. Normally I like to have two solar system cards with him so I can maximize the amount of power I get out of it, but sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. I do like these little flashy animations they have. They don't have them for every single possible combo, only ones that where certain cards reference each other. But they're pretty cool. I like them. I probably won't. I don't use them a lot, but like I said, I'm new at the game, so. Alright, it's science time. Time for science. Alright, so big bang just to get our keep get our power production up. Uh, and then just play our two uh, highest power cards. Ooh. Ooh! Oh, we tied perfectly. Ooh. That is... That is not... That does not happen very often. Well... Time to play the big guns. Godzilla is back, baby! Alright, so that's just two cards, but it gives us 250 total power, so that's quite the walloping. See, their Mosasaurus boosted both Polar Bear and uh, Bottlenose Dolphin, because those are both in the sea mammals category. And I ended up barely squeaking by. So, we'll play Aki and Saltfish. We'll play Ancient Olympia, and we'll play Titan Moon of Saturn. I'm saving Caterpillar tracks in case I lose, but I kind of doubt I will at this point. Ooh, maybe. Ooh. <sighs> that was close. I'm going to send this man a well played. go. Alright, and so that was the game. I forgot to mention the name was Cards, the Universe, and Everything, which is 4Q, which is a hilarious name, and I love it. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you think I should make more videos about this, just let me know. Anyway, I hope you guys make it a great day. Goodbye.